vámonos. A phrase that, depending on the context, would be something like, let's go. And my experience with vámonos is that it has a special power, a motivation that someone like me, who always goes by the book, can't say no to. Calling sick, tell them that you got the flu, like stomach flu. You never miss work anyways. My friend Rafael kept bugging me to go with him on a last minute trip. Maybe we could plan it for December. I get two weeks off for Christmas, I said. Bitch, I don't even know where I'll be in December. <laughs> Vamos, it's Guadalajara, the gay make of Mexico. Lots of hot guys, bathhouses, hot guys, <laughs> nightclubs, hot guys. <laughs> it's tempting. Vamonos. Rafael was hot, with muscles, six feet tall, with the smile and the voice of a charmer, so I could not say not to him. Once we got to our hotel room in Guadalajara, Rafael tried to convince me to download Grindr. <laughs> Bitch, you never know. It's like that saying, there's a foot for every shoe. You be in the shoe, since you're a bottom. <laughs> I get the metaphor, you whore. Vamos then, download it and start grinding, S Rafael smiled. Well, what could go wrong, I thought. <laughs> Later that night, we decided to explore the area. Downtown Guadalajara is just magical at night. We walked around the nightclubs, devouring with our eyes every guy wearing tie jeans so that their butts would be more pronounced. We got to our bar nearby and ordered some drinks. Rafael got all the attention, phone numbers, offers to go to the nicest and most exclusive nightclubs. While I was drinking and pretending to care about the, the attention my friend was getting, I then looked at my phone and saw a notification from Grindr. A new message. That was fast, I thought. <laughs> what up? What's the message I got? I looked at the profile. Brad was his name. In his picture, he was wearing brow line glasses that made me think of the ones Malcolm X wore. I actually thought Brad looked like Malcolm X with a few extra pounds. His stats, 5'9 in height, 210 pounds, 33 years old. He was visiting from Florida. Wanna know what's all about, was his status. I wonder what Vamonos situation led him to try things out. After all, he was another visitor in the city full of Rafaels. But there was so little I could have guessed based on his profile. One thing I was sure of, was that I liked him, and he apparently wanted to know, what up? <laughs> <laughs> Not much, just got to my hotel room. You, I replied. I noticed the message was delivered, which meant that he had seen it. I must have waited for about 30 minutes, but he didn't reply. Fuck, I thought. He's probably not interested. I put my phone away and forced myself to sleep <laughs> as Rafael <laughs> had already started to snore. <laughs> the next day, we decided to walk around, take some pictures, and buy some souvenirs. Rafael said he needed to buy some condoms. He was supposed to hang out with one of his guys, one of the guys he had met the night before. He asked me to buy them for him because he didn't want to see the judgy looks from the lady at the register <laughs> in the pharmacy. While I was waiting for the cashier to ring the condom for my whorish friend, I looked at my phone. There it was again, another notification from Grindr. So what brings you to this app? Brad replied early in the morning. I guess he also fell asleep, but he was kind enough to reply the next day. That was a good sign, I suppose. I decided not to reply right away. I didn't want him to think that I was desperate. Besides, Rafael and I had to get ready for the night's adventures. Not sure yet, I finally replied at the hotel room. I came from San Diego with my friend, open to different opportunities. That was code for, well, I want to get fucked, <laughs> but I'm just going to let you ask me more <laughs> so you don't think that I am that easy. <laughs> cool. Got any pics to, pictures to share? Like, sexy pics? LOL. He replied right away. Oh shit, I didn't have any. I was afraid of sharing pictures of my body, so I put my phone away and started to get dressed. 
I put on my favorite black jeans that made me look slim and pronounced my butt. Bitch, look at you. You got some ass, Rafael said. I quickly ran to the bathroom and pulled down my pants. I looked at my ass at the, on the mirror. I clenched and took a picture, bent down, took a picture, <laughs> on my knees, took a picture. I felt like Elle from Legally Blonde teaching her friend how to do the bend and snap pose. I sent Brent the three best pictures. I immediately closed the app. I don't know what got into me. Maybe because it was because I got a nice compliment from Rafael, the hottie, the one who always gets all the praises about his body, the perfect fuckboy, the desirable one, the Fabio from the romance novels, the in the moment type of guy, or the immediate gratification. Or maybe I was just too desperate that I just didn't care about sending those pictures. At the nightclub, Rafael ordered a vodka tonic because he was low on calories. I got a blue Hawaiian with an extra pineapple juice and all the calories he didn't want to consume. <laughs> Soon my friend met up with his hookup date and I would stay at the bar. I watched Rafael taking his shirt off with one hand and holding his pretentious drink with the other. <laughs> his hookup date was licking his nipples. <laughs> Ugh, par de jotos, I thought. I opened Grinder again and saw all the gays nearby, two to 10 feet away. I saw their profiles and idiotic statuses. No chubs, no face, no chat. Their illogicals, I don't speak to torsos phrases, yet they had shirtless and faceless profile pictures. I was upset, frustrated. I thought about how pendejo I was, pretending that I would have the same experience as Rafael, me, with a body I never felt comfortable in or expected anyone to feel attracted to, me trying to be part of a world I never belonged in because I lacked the looks, the muscles, and the charm. I got, out of, I got out of the club and went to the hotel since he was a block away. I opened my phone to send a message to Rafael to let him, up, to let him know where I was. Then I saw another message from Brad. Hey, what up? I'm at the bar in my hotel, drinking by myself. I was getting closer to the hotel and noticed his location, 100 feet away. <laughs> you are at the Portobello Hotel? I said. Yeah, care to join me? At that point, my hands were shaky and cold, and I started to breathe heavily. He was at the so same hotel I was. Um, wish I can. I have to go back to get my friend. I tried to relax and compose myself. Come on, get your bubble butt down here and join me for a drink. It won't hurt no one. I didn't even think twice. <laughs> I was sold. I loved the way he communicated, so smooth, so assertive. So I went straight to his location. We introduced each other formally, then proceeded to have the best conversation ever. He talked about the reason for him to be in Guadalajara was because of work. He had lived there before for a few months and really liked the city. I told him I was in grad school working on my MA in literature and writing, that I wanted to be a writer, but I was probably going to teach instead. We joked about that. The conversation must have lasted for about an hour. So I have a Patron bottle in my room. Come on, let's drink some, up, some more up there. He chalked his drink until he emptied the glass and asked the bartender to add the check to his room number. I was mesmerized with how much confidence he took care of that. He then pointed me to the elevator as he smoothly grabbed my ass and squeezed it. Nice, he whispered. <laughs> in his room, Brad kept enchanting me with his alcoholic breath, his sexy smile, and his confidence. He was sure of what he wanted and how he wanted it. He knew exactly what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. He did not need anyone else to tell him, vamonos, it was all himself. That was attractive, enticing, and motivating for me to let go of everything that would usually hold me back. I didn't feel inhibited being naked in front of him. As I was taking off my clothes, he held me from behind and kissed my neck. He owned me, a kind of possession I was completely comfortable with. After so much passion in an empty bottle of Patron, I started to get dressed. I looked at my phone, 
10 missed calls and about 15 messages from Rafael. I told Brad I had to go. He was about to pass out, but he managed to mumble something. I had fun, bubble butt. <laughs> he started to <laughs> snore right away. I left his room feeling no regrets. For the first time in my puta vida, I feel <laughs> validated. I was the perfect shoe for his food, his very big food that I somehow <laughs> managed to fit in my shoe. <laughs> the tequila helped, I'm sure. <laughs> for him, I was probably just another Mexican fuckboy to add to his list, and I didn't care. I walked out up there with confidence. I owned the walk with uh, more insurance. I felt as desirable as those Rafaels out there. I finally met Rafael outside of the nightclub. He was trying to sober up with a bottle of water. So what happened to the guy you were making out with, I said. I dumped the bitch. He wanted me to buy some drinks. I ain't nobody, sugar daddy. But I met this other guy. He fine, bitch. He's what Guadalajara is all about, you know? I smiled and took out the rest of the condoms. Here, you probably need these then. Oh, thank you, bitch. Wait, what are two missing, he said. Vamonos, I am so tired, I can barely walk. <laughs>